Hello everyone and welcome to episode 30 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm actually not going to be joined by a guest and I'm just here with you on my own. I thought it would be nice just to take a little look back on our journey so far. I can't believe that the podcast has been is over a year old. Um, I launched at the end of 2022 and here we are now in 2024. It's been an amazing journey and I'm so grateful to everyone who has joined our community and been part of the journey so far. The podcast has brought so much to my life and I hope it's brought a huge amount to yours as well. I've been joined by so many inspiring women and we have had so many incredible conversations weaving wisdom together into this world. I've learned so much and I hope you have too. And it's very difficult to pick out highlights from such an amazing collection of guests who've so kindly given their time to share their wisdom with me and with you. But if I had to pick out some common threads, I think something that's been constantly reinforced by nearly everyone I've spoken to is really the power of community. The fact that who you're surrounded by and what can be achieved when you come together with people of shared interest, shared vision. I think through it all, I've just been humbled yet again by nature and the fact that there are so many different ways to have a relationship with the natural world, whether that's fond memories from childhood. Some of my guests and myself were lucky enough to grow up in quite rural settings. So nature was quite an important part of our childhood and it provided us, many of us, with a sanctuary when we faced challenges in life. It was a a constant, a place where we felt safe, we didn't feel judged, where we were able to be ourselves without the repercussions that we might have felt from community, family, school even. We didn't feel that we had to hide. Well, we maybe hid, we hid with nature, but we were always seen and witnessed by the natural world. But then I've also had amazing guests who grew up in more urban environments who perhaps had to look a little bit harder to forge their connection with nature. Not to say that nature stops at the edges of the city, but certainly there's plenty of nature all around us, whether you are in an urban or a rural environment. And that's part of the beauty of nature is that it is there for all of us everywhere. One of my earlier guests, Lucy, who we talked about foraging, she lives in in a much more urban environment and she talks a huge amount of how important foraging was for her and part of her mission is to share foraging with other people who potentially don't have the space to grow their own food at home because they don't have a garden and how foraging can be a way for them to bring more natural, healthier plants into their diet. And it's something that's available to everyone. And that's something that she's really passionate about. And I think that's important is finding these gateways where nature can be and can feel accessible to everyone. And there's also been lots of references to science. This isn't all woo-woo, but we've talked about scents and smells. We've talked about frequencies and energy and a fantastic conversation with Lindsay about forest bathing and also Helen at Make It Wild um, about the amazing science that supports how spending time in nature is beneficial to our health and mental well-being. And I think more and more with everything that we face in our modern societies, that's become really important to all of us. But the other side of that is this sense of reciprocity. Now, this has become a theme that many of us and many of my guests have, have spoken about and it's this sort of beautiful circular energy exchange where 
we're always giving and receiving and yes a lot of the focus of this podcast is on the natural world and how really we're so out of balance with that relationship of reciprocity the fact that as a society it's really been taking 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 and not much giving has gone back to nature and we've looked at so many different ways that actually it is possible for us to find these ways to recreate that sense of reciprocity and there are numerous gateways for us to take to do that there was a wonderful conversation I had with Jessica Brennan and she is an absolute powerhouse and her focus was just purely on looking for healthier, safer, cleaner products to use around the house. Her motivation for that came from trying to do the best for her two children and their health challenges that they had and from it she's grown a business advising other people and also (laughs) has even become an advocate and taken what she's learned to help create legislation even to clean up products for other people. One of the things that she was passionate about was saying that those of us who are in a privileged enough position to be able to be thinking about these things have the responsibility to make the right choices, to make educated choices, to educate ourselves and our friends and our family and choose better products. Because if we support those businesses, we support those products that are making better ethical choices, then those products can become cheaper, they can become more accessible to more people. And something that I really took away from her conversation was that, yeah, it might feel like nothing is happening and that we're powerless. And, you know, we've all sat there and watched the international governments come together at, you know, the COP conferences. And, you know, there's there's been talk for for many years, decades even, and very little action. But my conversation with Jessica was a stark reminder that actually, you know, we aren't powerless as consumers and we need to remember the power we have as consumers and therefore take responsibility for educating ourselves and making the best choices we can. And the other side of that is something that a lot of my guests have you know, we've talked of at length is to give ourselves some grace as well. Like we're not perfect. You know, we can't be perfect. You know, our quest for perfectionism is normally a handbrake on actually doing anything. And just to do what we feel we can do. You know, if you can do just one small thing, take one step, It's a new year, this is a time in January where we're often thinking about intentions, goals, dreams, wishes, whatever you want to call them. But, you know, what could you do to change something in your life? You know, it could be as simple as changing the laundry liquid or detergent or how you wash your clothes at home, even reducing the temperature. It could be that you're inspired by some of the conversations that I've had with Laura and Wendy Sweet about arcing and also Helen at Make It Wild about rewilding and how you can do something at home on your own patch, whether you find a way to add a pond or plant more native wild flowers or native plants and bushes that support the animals that should be in your ecosystem. Um, Mary Reynolds is someone that we've we've mentioned a lot and she has some incredible books, We Are the Ark or Acts of Restorative Kindness for the Earth. And I think really that's as simple as it can be, you know, just hold in your heart the love that you want to express to the world. You know, several of my guests at the later part of the year, Jackie Winters, where we talked a lot about energy and frequency in relation to crystals, but just in relation to our relationships with the world and nature around us. And Alasia Sunstar as well talked a lot about her grid work. And 
how they both talked about offering healing to our communities, to the land. You know, this is, um, you know, not something that necessarily everyone will feel called to do, but we can all do in our small way by, you know, just taking moments of time on our patch and radiating love. You know, just close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, place your hands over your heart and just think of everything you love about the natural world and everything around you. And I think really with everything that's going on in the world right now, we all need to find a way to hold on to that light. And I hope that this podcast is a place that you can come back to on a weekly basis and be reminded that there are good people It was one of my most recent guests, Lucy, in Ireland. And she very, very beautifully said, most people actually want to do good. And I think we need to remember that because sometimes we are so inundated with things in the media that make us feel that the majority of people don't want to do good. But I think the majority of people do. And... What I've seen from my journey so far with this podcast is that's true. Most people have a good heart and they might not always know what to do, but they do the best they can. And we need to give ourselves grace and we need to give them grace and remember the strength of community and how by coming together, we really can make a huge difference. I mean, I love the story of Helen Um, at Make It Wild and they started with just one plot of land that they bought with the intention of planting trees and turning over to nature and now they have created this amazing business which is just going from strength to strength and they have hundreds of acres that they are supporting purely for nature. So just go forth into 2024 reminded that there are good people out there I'll try and bring as many as I can in front of you so that you can support them you can follow what they're doing sometimes we're not able to do things ourselves but you are able to support other people so people like Helen who has options for you to support her and you know sometimes actually one of the most empowering things you can do is to be an encourager to see these people these businesses some of these amazing small businesses that are out there that are doing their best and working really hard to make the right choices to keep nature at the forefront of their decisions and their decision making like Lucy at Hedgewitch who was my most recent episode and if we support them if we buy their products we help them have a huge ripple effect so yeah that's that's really I think the messages that I've taken away from the last 12 months I mean there's there's so many more amazing people that I haven't mentioned and I would love to mention I mean I've had amazing conversations about the power of horses with Holly Mitchell, uh, Kerry Searle in Australia is an animal communicator. She brings forth so much wisdom from the animal world. Bobby Joe and we had an amazing discussion about safaris and how photographic safaris can be hugely helpful for conservation and how many conservation organizations struggled quite considerably during covid as a result of the restrictions on international travel we've talked to caroline and polly who both talked more from a business standpoint caroline talked about food systems and the importance of the changes that are happening there but also the struggles that they're facing with Um, the cost of living crisis, which again feeds back into this notion of supporting the businesses that are making the right decisions um, and being intelligent about where you're spending your money, realising that that does make a difference. Um, Polly reminded us of the fact that we need to be more in tune with the seasons and how we need to 
take the wisdom that we can learn from nature and the elements and the seasonal influences and how we can bring that into how we approach life, how we approach business. The wisdom every season has to share with us and not be caught up in this perpetual summer and youthful cycle. You know, Lucy shared amazing ideas about the need for elders, rites of passage, and I had an amazing conversation with Anaya from Le Conte, and we talked about courage and just grace and reverence and you know several of my other guests have have talked specifically about health and well-being you know taking a natural approach can help with managing our health and the health challenges that we might be facing in life um erica was fantastic in talking about how we need to find our sense of belonging our sense of story and how there's power in that as well i mean several of my guests we've talked about indigenous wisdom and you know i've said a few times how that has often to me meant thinking about the americas and and indigenous cultures that are still you know prevalent and actually i've been reminded by several of my guests who are based in the uk and ireland about the Celtic wisdom, indigenous wisdom that we have here, which is more resonant with our land and our ancestry and the wisdom that we can have for us in relation to our plants and animals and seasons that we experience here. So I'd love to hear from you to know if there was anything in particular that stood out for you. Um, if you've got any if there's any guests out there that would like to reach out because they would like to share their story and their wisdom with this community then please feel free to get in touch and I'm looking forward to an exciting 2024 bringing you lots more hope and inspiration and finding ways that we can nurture nature and have nature nurture us so thank you everyone and i'll be back next week with another guest for you and thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me i really appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to tune in and listen thank you so much for listening to the nurtured by nature podcast i truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.